He says, I have a question that how can we define modesty, known in Arabic as haya, as the misconception is in the minds of people that modesty is all about just covering the entire body through wearing the hijab or the parda. So give us in detail the authentic concept of modesty. This, Brother Muhammad, requires a lecture. And alhamdulillah, I had already given such lectures uh, in the past. You'll find that on YouTube. Also in Ramadan, if I'm not mistaken, in our program uh, uh, called Our Values, there was a segment on this topic. And haya, modesty or bashfulness, is a feeling that either Allah grants you as a favor and blessing from Him to practice it, or you train yourself into being a person of bashfulness. So it can be either one. And it refrains you. It hinders you. It stops you. It prevents you from doing anything that may tarnish your reputation. Anything that may draw criticism unjustly and unfairly to you. Anything that may be a reason of punishment on the Day of Judgment. And Brother Muhammad was referring to women in, 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 in particular. But bashfulness is not only for women. It is a characteristic of our religion. The Prophet said, alayhi salam, for every religion, there is a moral conduct that stands out. And the moral conduct of Islam that Islam is known for is bashfulness, al-haya. And this is exactly what happened when our fathers, our parents, Adam and Hawa and Eve, ate from the forbidden tree. They saw their private parts and it was revealed to them after it was concealed. So they rushed to cover their awra with the tree leaves. And this is why they descended to earth because of that sin of eating from the forbidden tree. The problem is that if you look at the primitive inhabitants of the jungles and those sophisticated civilized people living in the capitals of the world, in New York, in London, in Milan, those who walk on the catwalk, as they call it, you'll find that the common denominator between both of these primitives and those sophisticated, civilized people is nudity, is the lack of bashfulness. They don't have any shame. They don't have any modesty. So this is why they fight niqab. They fight hijab. They oppress Muslim women who abide by it. If you strip naked, this is okay. This is beautiful. Everybody enjoys it. But if you were to be modest and bashful, this is totally out of the question. And in Islam, it is not only what you wear that defines you. It is a great part of your identity as a Muslim. But it is also your way of behaving and talking, the way you are present in the community. So a woman wearing niqab, wearing full hijab, but she posts her video clips, snapshots, uh, snap uh, 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 shots and pictures of immodest things, even if with her husband. This is contradicting with haya. A woman's identity is in her bashfulness. Islam is the only religion that protects women, that honors their bashfulness and their modesty through various measures that must be followed. Allah Azza wa orders women to wear the hijab, the full hijab, to protect women from 
men looking at her. Allah Azza wa Jal protects women even from an irresponsible word that may slander her or may tarnish her reputation. So anyone who says an, such an irresponsible slandering word would be flogged by 80 lashes unless he brings four male Muslim witnesses to testify that she committed fornication or adultery. Islam protects a Muslim woman and the non-Muslim women as well from even any sort of physical contact. I cannot shake hands with someone who's not lawful for me. Though people think that shaking hands is okay. It's a sign of respect, yes, but not with the opposite gender. And this doesn't end. So if you go to London, Europe, shaking hands is common. If you don't, they're insulted. Who cares? If I go to Spain, kissing on the cheek is common. And if I don't, this, this is insult. What is the limit? Islam puts the limit. Protection of the man and of the woman. Mixing with your cousins, with your non-mahram relatives is prohibited in Islam. To safeguard the women and the men in the community, let alone mixing freely with the opposite gender who are not related to you. A woman is prohibited from leaving the house wearing perfume and it's a major sin so that she would not lure and seduce other men when she, they find her scent. It is even prohibited for a woman to wear an anklet that makes a sound so that when she walks, people or men may listen to that sound and shaitan may throw something in their hearts about this woman, how beautiful she is, how the anklet may look, how her foot is, Shaitan is there. Islam prohibits a woman from softening her voice when speaking to the opposite gender. Allah Azza wa says, if you fear Allah, then do not be soft in speech to men, lest he in whose heart is disease should desire covet, but speak with appropriate speech. So all of this shows you that Islam highly regards bashfulness. Yet, unfortunately, the enemies of Islam have noticed this. They've learned this. And they know for certain that you cannot defeat Islam until you corrupt half of the society. And that is corrupting women. And this is what they're doing and striving to do in all Muslim countries. The call of freeing women, empowering women, that they are equal to men. And we know the consequences of such acts. And we can see that clearly in Muslim and non-Muslim countries. Because they went against the law of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the consequences are crystal clear. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect all Muslims from such things.